Hey, thought I'd give everybody a little bit of a look around the farm and what we're doing this time of year. Um, we are early spring. We're heading into the end of March. Next week will be the last week of March, if I'm not mistaken. And it's been very cold this weekend. It's going to be down into the mid-20s tonight. So as par for East Tennessee, we will have a loss on stone fruit. Big loss. Uh, we'll lose quite a bit, if not all, of our stone fruit. We'll see how the year goes. Uh, but that's part of it. So be lacking in plums and peaches and nectarines and pluots and pluaries, uh, apricot. We don't have any almonds planted yet, so can't lose them yet. But show you a little bit of what we've got going on down here today. I've been taking advantage of the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful weather. Like I said, it's cold, it's windy. The wind will cut right through you, but and I'll probably have a wind burn face tomorrow. Everybody think I've been out uh, sun tanning, but it'll be wind burn. I'm getting a little bit of sun, obviously, but so I've been down here doing some tilling. Let me turn you around, and let you see where we're at. So there's the John Deere 1025R. That is our workhorse around here. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen it, it's got the H120 quick detached loader on it. And you don't need a stand for that. It stands up on its own. I could drop it right there and walk off and leave it. Come back to it, hook back up to it. And then we're using a Frontier tiller. I've got some videos on this, you ought to see. Um, this is the RT1149. It's not being the best tiller. It functions. It works. But it really is for much lighter duty work than what we do with it. So, she's dirty. She needs clean. But she's working. I hate the way these seats do on these John Deere's. Ain't that just awful? That's just awful. You can't hardly keep that off of it. So, been doing some tilling. I've got two here, two approximately four foot. They're technically like 50 inches, but four foot wide beds. Um, and these are about 75 foot long a piece. So we'll be planting there. Um, I'm thinking we do get some light flooding in this area, but usually not up this far. So I'm thinking this bed is going to be potatoes. And I'm thinking that bed will be potatoes. Now, these this is a small young orchard. They were little bitty trees that I planted. And I'm hoping they take off this year and grow. So I'm going to use the, some of the ground in this orchard for planting this year. So these rolls are about 200 foot a piece. And I'm not sure what I'm going to plant over here yet. A lot to plant, but it needs to be something that I don't have to water constantly. Uh, watering over here is a little bit harder. Um, we've got a few hazelnut trees growing over here these are the Americans so this one's starting to take off looking forward to a good year out of it and got another one down here we had several here but they didn't make it so trying to do better about taking care of them and propagating them. So, here's another one. And that is another American hazelnut. We'll try to get some different varieties in here. This will be our hazelnut section right here. So, and I'm thinking about doing another, tilling another plot right through here. So if I do that, I'll probably plant potatoes up here also. Got a lot of potatoes to plant. So 
I think that might be what I end up doing. Potatoes, potatoes, they should be good as long as we don't have a drought. If we have a drought, I've got some backup plans for what I can do for that. Um, part of what I fell in love with this property when we bought it was the fact that we got a pretty darn strong stream slash creek that flows through here. And this is spring fed. So the fact that it is spring fed means that it rarely, rarely gets low on water. It has got low a couple times during droughts, but it never has run out. Um, so you see how beautiful the water is there. Like I said, this is part of the reason we fell in love with the property was the water source. Um, and this is my backup alternative for, for over here is I'll use this. I'll put a sump pump in uh, and pump water directly out of the creek and water that because it's just currently too far to bring water all the way from there <clears throat> to here. I do got another plan and that would be a trailer with a water tank on it that we would pull down here with the side by side. <coughs> Excuse me, allergens. So there's our new farmer's friend high tunnel. That is a 14 foot by 100 foot. We just put that up. So there's the garden plots that we are working on right now. Got some apple trees out there in the front. So we are in full swing. Uh, this week we will be planting peas and carrots and radishes. Uh, turnips will be going in the ground. So we got a lot going on. So hope you all getting ready for your garden. It is that time of year for sure. I'm trying to get the tractor in gear here. If you haven't got started on those gardens, it is not too late. Get you some might be able to get by with uh, possibly get by with starting you some tomato seeds this late in the season. We've done got all of ours started. Uh, already got some planted in the greenhouse. But if you haven't want to start a seed, obviously you can still buy them. Uh, we sell, if you're local to us, or we ship, uh, we sell tomato plants and uh, we'll sell okra starts and squash and zucchini and some winter squash. Uh, I think I said tomatoes and peppers. We specialize in super hot peppers and hot peppers. So we'll have all those plants available. Our, uh, our nursery will open up, and we are a Tennessee licensed nursery, but our nursery will open up for uh, the public. Uh, actually started this weekend, but we will start full force next weekend. And so we will be running, at that time, we will be doing uh, 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock, Friday and Saturday. Um, and not everything is available the first week. We do have our organic soil amendments available. Farm truck. And uh, we will have uh, some early tomato plants for the people that want to baby them. We are not past our last frost date. 
But maybe you're like us. Maybe you grow in a greenhouse. Uh, maybe you like to uh, cover your plants and take care of them for a few extra weeks. Uh, all of that is definitely an option. I've got a small section of road here I have to tram up to make things easier. Heading back up to the house. I've got tomato plants to up pot. I gotta get things ready for our customers. That'll be fine. Um, we've been, customers have been coming this weekend and picking up their seed potatoes. So we're happy to get all the seed potatoes done. We'll have sweet potato slips a little bit later in the year when it's actually time to plant them. You do not want to plant your sweet potatoes early. I had to grab the phone, the wind about blowed out my hand. But you definitely don't want to plant them. They like that warm soil. You put them in that cool soil and you're just asking for trouble. Well, I think I'm going to call this the end of this video. Y'all got questions about what to plant and when to plant it? Comment below. Hey, if you are not already subscribed to our channel, be sure to like this video, subscribe to it, hit the notification icon so you get notified of our new videos. And you can see we got some cool projects coming on this year. That way you'll be made aware of them as soon as they are up. And share this for friends. You know, we want to uh, spread gardening information and homesteading information to as many people as get it. Now we are not a full-time homestead. We work a full-time job, but we try every year to get closer to homesteading. We can a lot of our own food, and by we, I mean Tiffany. Uh, we raise a lot of our own food. Probably, I'm gonna say we're raising 50 to 60% of our food maybe even closer to 70. Uh, meat is the is a big exception for us. We uh, don't raise meat at this time. We have raised rabbits for meat. We have raised chickens for meat. But at this time, we have chosen to uh, focus on our organic farming and let the meat go by the wayside. Sorry about that. Pulled over, let some traffic by. I'm just about to my driveway. Try not to hold up traffic any more than I have to. It's rude. Got to be good to your neighbors. Turn around and give you a view of the orchard while I'm parking. So this is just one of our orchards. This is what we call our upper orchard. We have a row of uh, peach trees out front. And these are stone fruits. There's nectarines and plums. Same thing here, plum cots and nectarines and plums in that row. We've got a few rolls of high density apples we just put in. And then these are our two hedge rolls. We'll do a video on these shortly. But these are uh, hedge rolls of uh, semi dwarf apple trees on a G935 rootstock. And we got some apple trees over there. So. Alright guys, I hope today's video was useful and helpful. Uh, sometimes I think it's good to see what other people are doing. So you can get a game plan yourself. We got fruit trees going in this year. We got some other fruits that we'll get to a video on shortly. That's one of the surprises. We got a greenhouse to finish up. We have got a lot going on this year. So I gotta get off here and get with it. Again, I hope you enjoyed. So take care and God bless.